All right, guys, so a little while back, and I say a little while back, but it's probably a lot while back, I did a video review of this FPV style camera, and it's this little guy right here, and it was the uh, Ordro EP5, I believe it was called. Yeah, and I have their website here. Uh, it was their first person video camera, digital camcorder, 1080p, full HD. And it was a nice camera. It's the quality was decent. A again, for its age, when it first came out, it was nice and easy to put on. You just kind of wrap this around your head, got it in position, and you're off to the races. You could kind of just kind of get that where you wanted it, and you're good. You had a nice line of sight, and quality, like I said, seemed decent. Now, one of the only real issues I had with it sort of an issue, I guess, was that it didn't have any kind of image stabilization. And I realized that at that point in time, image stabilization in a camera at that price point and in this form factor really wasn't a thing. And it was really only starting to be seen in cameras like the GoPros. So this was the EP5 right here. I've always liked the form factor. I thought for a lot of things you and I may do, it would be actually really cool because there's a lot of times where you just don't want to strap a GoPro on. You don't want to wear one of those silly head mounts. You don't have a helmet on. You don't want it here in your chest. You really do want it at eye level. But maybe you're just wearing a baseball hat or no hat at all. So what do you do? That was an option, EP5. Now they've released the EP7. Oh yes, the EP7. This is coming in right now. It says it saves $142. Comes in right now at $195.99. So let's say $196. Bucks. Let's say $200. Bucks. And this EP7 first person video camera coming in at 4K 30 frames per second with gimbal anti-shake and autofocus. Mm -hmm. I think we should take a look at this. Oh yes, we should. Right now. So I got this package in the mail and I wish I wouldn't have opened it downstairs because it literally was just a big taped kind of bag with bubble wrap around it. And I was like, I don't even know what this is. When I opened it, it, it was this right here. And I was like, did I, did I order headphones or an old Walkman? No, Ordro. This is the EP7. Now, just so you guys realize it did take about two to three weeks and that's not unheard of i believe these are coming from china somewhere so you just really have no idea right now how long it was going to take i took the cheapest shipping i could get but comes in a nice little case my old one this little guy the ep5 didn't didn't really come with anything so let's crack it open here i do like the little case it's very nice and i'll bring this down hopefully we can see the whole thing looks like we should be good uh in the top here kind of nice we get I don't even know what this is looks like some kind of watch band maybe you can put a start and stop or something on there well we'll see we'll see what that is like a watch band you get this is super awesome actually it's not just some cheap little memory card you get a 64 gig SanDisk micro SD extreme really that's nice nice that you get an extreme user manual Nice big manual, big font, big texts, big images. I think it has everything in it you and I would want. And there's a nice little QR code, which is great. QR code so you and I can find the application. It does say it's called OD Cam in Google. All right, nice, nice manual, seems good. What else do we get? We get a micro USB to USB-A. So that would have been nice to see as a USB-C. But again, I don't even know how long this has been out. It may have been out for a little bit. And we get, it looks like a bunch of just little clips and I don't know, little pads maybe. I'm not even sure. Maybe I'll have to look at the manual. That might be a thing. And a cleaning cloth. You need a cleaning cloth because you gotta keep it clean. Now, the one thing, this is the EP5 again. Hopefully you guys can see it. Actually, that's, that's all the pieces right there. Maybe these are extra because there's a little piece on here. I think there used to be one on this side. I can't remember. Haven't used this in a while, but it all kind of kind of fits together. Kind of a put it all together yourself. It's like as if Ikea made a camera. 
So in the bottom part, I still, I still think that's really excellent that they give you an actual big brand name, nice card. And I'm not sure what this is. I guess maybe I'll find out. Oh, look, this is what it is. Right off the bat, look at that. So cool. You get a little, like a little trigger. It's like a remote. That's fantastic. So you could put this, as you can see, you could just hold it in your hand if you wanted to. Looks like you should be able to put it on a keychain if you wanted to put it there. Or this, I'm guessing, could fit, I guess somehow just in here. Does this come off? Oh yeah, see this one comes off. Making more sense now. Oh yes it is. This comes off. It's flashing, it's got a battery in it. And this goes in here. Really gotta stretch that over somehow. There it goes. Voila, bingo. USB, so it has its own battery, I guess in it. There's a little charger for it. A little USB charger, micro as well. Well, nice when you get a little surprise like that. That's lovely. You can see when you click on it, right? Pop, pop. These must be the ons. Maybe you have, tap them again, turns it off. I don't know. Now I don't think, I'm gonna throw this out there. I don't think this is one like you see on the GoPros where if the GoPro is physically off, it'll turn the camera on, but still, and I do like, it's kind of got a, see that weird angle? So if it's on, yeah, that's, that's, that's handy. I like that a lot, actually. Okay, and then we get the headband itself. I'll just move this self over. Headband itself, we get the little arm piece for one side, arm piece for the other side, and the camera. So this does look, if you look at the old one, here's the old one, size-wise, very similar. I do like the fact that this has got some much nicer buttons laid out on the top. This one was always a little hard because the button was like a touch button. So you're always like, it's up here somewhere because you have it on your head and you're like, it's here somewhere. You kind of just roll your finger over it and hope you get it. These are physical buttons, which, which is way nicer. That's a huge win. I'm gonna use this as a, how do I build it? And my guess is, They've actually put this on the other side. So it's gonna go on your right side versus your left side. So this would be, this would go in like this, I'm guessing. And this would go like this, which is, which is movable. You got these little pop points. So you just kind of snap those in there. And then this piece here is simply gonna latch onto this. And it, you can feel it does kind of just kind of sit inside there. So I think what we need to do is this is a two-parter. So you get the little foam piece or rubber piece, I guess. This goes on to this. This is threaded. So you can see there that it's threaded, hopefully. And this is just going to go. So that goes on like that. And you just tighten that as much as you want. And again, what's nice about this is this is completely, you know, pivotable to a point. And then once you kind of find the spot you want, you just kind of retighten that back up again. I feel I feel like I feel like one of the board, right? It's right there. But I do, I like the fact that there's buttons and you can literally feel like you can tell that's button one, button two, button three. That's handy. What do you guys think? I think that's all right. And it's it's a good size. I think I got it pointed in a good direction. It's definitely heavier. It's definitely heavier, I feel, than this one, without question. Now, these pieces here, my guess is maybe just maybe some extras. Maybe this one here is for tightening. I don't know. But I do like the little container. That's nice, for sure. It does have, again, a little protector on the front here, so make sure you take that off. If not, you'll be like, why is my image so crap? I'm going to charge this up, and we are heading away this weekend for a little trip. Just a little weekend getaway. I'm going to bring this with me. We're going to test it. And that footage is coming right up, right now, for you guys. Go. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. It's nice. Oh yeah, there's three, three tubes, floaty tubes.
stopped raining finally, so that's awesome. Be able to come down here. Super shallow, actually. See the ground there? All right, you guys can see where we parked the bikes last night. <clears throat> it was so rainy yesterday when we came here. And I'm pretty sure it's supposed to rain today and tomorrow. And if it does, I'm not 100% sure how my pants are going to dry. Because we don't have a dryer or anything here. So here's the bikes. Looking all good. My friend Sean's new bike. Yeah. Look at that, hey? Eh? That's lovely. Well, Indian. Now, I was talking to you guys about uh, 4K 60p and 4K 30p, I believe. I just got to get something out of my bag here. And just to let you know that it does seem, at least from what I can see, if you are shooting in 60p, you do get a bit of a crop, just a tiny bit, not a lot, but it's there. So you're gonna get wider in 4K 30 than you are if you shoot in 4K 60. So you really have to kind of decide what you need. Do you need that extra frame rate? Or do you need that extra width? Now for me, for the most parts, one of these rocks is loose. I think it's this one, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. Yeah, if I'm shooting 4K, for me, 4K 60 is not really that important. I always want the width. I think width is more important for me. All right, I'm gonna go back inside and uh, see if the see if the sun will ever come out today. I hope so. So the other real cool thing about this is being able to use it to record things like those of us that are doing like flights and things like that. Compass calibration. Make sure I start that. You guys should hopefully be able to see me somewhere. There I am, down there. Nice little shot of the area. Yeah, it's nice actually. Just kind of bring it up. Make sure I hit no trees. That's pretty important, I guess. There it is, way over there. Fun thing with the Mavic, it's just so little. Bit of wind up there for sure. Actually, we get a shot this way, we'll come across. But there's nobody out in the water right now. That'd be nice. Very cool. So I think a headset like this actually works really nice if you're trying to do some drone videos where you want to be able to shoot everything. Way better than just putting a GoPro on your head all the time. So, yeah, very nice.
my friends, so we are back, and here it is again, right? The uh, Ordro, Ordro, am I saying that right? EP7, FPV cam, and honestly, it performed, I almost think, better than I expected. As I showed you before, I do have the EP5, which is this fella right here, this is the EP5. I did like it, the only thing I didn't really like too much about it was the fact that the buttons were touch sensitive, so there was no tactile feeling with it. This, no issues being able to come up here and know exactly where your fingers are in regards to the buttons to be able to, of course, turn it on, start recording, take a photo, etc., etc. And even with the little remote, the camera, once it was on, it functioned very well with it. Now, the only thing that you have to sort of be aware is that when you turn this on, it does make a little sound to say that it's powering on. If you go to hit like the record or take a picture right away, it doesn't work and you're like, come on, what, what are you doing? Click, click, come on, clicky, clicky, clicky. My guess is there's no real indication for you and I to kind of tell it that it's kind of still powering on. So it does power on fairly quick, but you know, it's a turn it on, kind of give it five, 10 seconds for it to fully power on. And then every time you and I hit one of the buttons, for instance, the camera will say, taking a picture, I believe it is, which allows you to get yourself steady so that it does. It's not click, right? It's click, you hear the little voice response. Same thing with video. It's click, the voice response tell you it's starting, and then it goes, as well as when it stops. But if you turn it on really quick and start hitting the buttons without giving it a little bit of time after you power it on, that's where you and I can probably experience an issue where you're like, what's happening? It's, it's you and I just having a patience. And, and that's something that I did experience once or twice when I was shooting. I ended up having to take it off. I'm like, why is it not recording? And it was, it just didn't give me the voice prompt because I was too impatient. Every other time it worked fine. All right, so let's talk about stabilization because it does have some, which is great. Is this way better, way better than the EP5 that came out that I had? Without question, that had no stabilization and you can tell it was shaky a lot of the time. So unless you were fairly steady, you really notice it. I took this on little walks up and down the little path. I actually took it actually off the headset and had it handheld when I was testing some of that 60p footage. That was all handheld and it's, it's not bad. Is it as good as if you and I had a brand new GoPro Hero 8? No, it's definitely not that level of stabilization, but it is a very nice welcome addition to this headset, without question. And you guys could see it. There was a shot back there that was me just kind of walking up the steps toward the little cottage. There was a shot of me, of course, walking up to the motorcycles. And normally that would be ridiculously shaky, but, Definitely viewable, definitely watchable, and none of that footage had any extra stabilization put onto it. So because it shoots fairly wide, running some stabilization via it through Premiere or After Effects or Final Cut should be able to smooth that out even more. The other thing to kind of be aware of that I talked about is in regards to frame rates. I did notice that if you go to 4K 60p, it does crop in a little bit. Not a lot, but it is a little bit, so if you're looking for width, depending on what you're doing, then shoot in 4K 30. If you want that little bit extra slow-mo, because you know that you're gonna do that later, or you wanna edit in 60, so you have that crazy smooth footage, then you are gonna crop in just a tad. For me, I only use 60p when I have the thought of maybe wanting to slow it down in the future. In regards to some of the packaging stuff, as I said, the little watch strap button thing worked great. Inside here, I wasn't sure what these were. Uh, this little guy right here, that was when I was confused. This is basically a wrench. So when you take off that little piece here, wherever it is, that mounts this inside, um, this kind of just helps you tighten it. It allows you to crank it on there so it's not gonna fall off. And I don't think if you and I are just walking around, you necessarily need that. I think you can hand tighten it enough. But if you're gonna be doing something a little more extreme, or something where if it falls off, that's a bad idea. Let's say you're parachuting or hang gliding or something like that where if it falls off, it's it's off. You may wanna make sure you get that little wrench to crank it in there. Is it worthy? I, I think so. If you're someone that does a lot of FPV style stuff and it could be someone that's just doing like I showed you stuff like drone reviews or drone flying where you wanna be able to record that whole process. This is way more convenient for one to put on 
in comparison to say a GoPro where you have to put all this stuff on. The fact that it actually does the little voice prompts inside here, huge, just so that you know that it's actually recording. And not that I've shown it, the app itself is where you and I can go in and change settings like what frame rate you want to shoot in and what resolution, things like that. And of course has the controller for being able to start and stop the recording, take pictures, etc. Oh, in regards to photos, here's a couple photos. Photo resolution, 14 megapixel, actually looks pretty good. It does suffer a little bit in dynamic range, but again, nothing that was shocking for a camera sensor of this size. I think with a little bit of fine tuning inside an editor, you can get it to look great. If it is in something that has very consistent lighting, doesn't even matter if it's a little dark or a little bright, it does very well. It's just when you see something bright in an area that has shadows that it kind of exposes for the bright area so the shadow area suffers a little bit. Do you normally really buy an action camera for photography? I always find that's an added bonus. And resolution wise and clarity wise, I thought it did actually fairly good. There you go, my friends, the EP7, yeah. I think I'll definitely be using this for certain things, without question, for certain things. And then a nice little add-on to the toolkit, for sure. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to put links down below to this, to their website. Uh, for me, it did take just a couple weeks uh, for delivery. Not that bad. And uh, very cool, right? Very cool. I think that's all right. All right, my friends, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, we have more videos coming up. Yeah. Got a whole bunch of stuff when I was away for the weekend, just kind of showed up. So that's awesome. Later, my friends.